Next thing we want to do is to a is to do a splint on a bended knee. The first thing you want to do is not to straighten the knee out. You want to keep it in a position that it's in because if you do, if you should move it, you might cause more harm than good. So of course you want to do the rice method, which is um, the rest. You want to apply the ice, um, but you also want to make sure that you're checking down here again for the pulse down at the ankle. But all of this is important, but to make sure that you're applying a splint, what you would do is take another, like a board like this, a sand splint, and you would make sure that it's right above the ankle and right below. So it should look just like that. And what you would do, of course, you do not, when you wrap this, you do not want to wrap the knee. So you will start, uh, tie it down here. Um, you will tie it in place. Okay, this is, you tie it in place here. Okay. Let's say we're going to tie here. And then we want to make sure we don't tie it around the knee part. You want, and you don't want to tie it down at the leg part down here, but you want to tie it up here. So, as you can see, we're going to secure it, tie it down, keep it in the bent at all times, but we want to just make sure that it's tied down. Of course, we want to make sure that it's not too tight. We want to check for um, um, rice, which is we're going to make sure that she's resting and that she's calm. Um, we want to make sure um, that we have, a. Um, in this case, we're not, uh, we probably would apply ice on the knee for uh, 20 minutes. Uh, we want to make sure we have the compression, um, which will be stable like this, and of course the elevation. At this point, we don't want to elevate, but in this case, instead of the rice, we would do the um, the circulation. Make sure by checking here, um, we would check for circulation. I would um, tap their um, foot and make sure they ask them to close their eyes and let, and they will tell me where the, they feel the sensation at. So that way, you would check for. Um, for movement and circulation and sensation. So again, when you have a fractured knee, you do not want to move the knee out of position, but you want to secure it with a splint that is extended out like this, um, and extended past and secure and tied around like that. Thank you very much. All right, the next video will be the tibia. How do we apply? Um, how do we do? A fibula fracture. Well, the first thing, of course, you want to do is to make sure that the body is stabilized again. You do not want to move the person at this time. Um, you want to, because we are, all depends on the situation, you want to make sure we're going to improvise on how to apply. You can either take certain ways, certain types there. Um, you can um, take two sand splints and put on both sides of the leg right here. This is one way if you had two, you put one right here, and of course you would put one on the other side, and you would tie together. Um, because we don't have two, um, what we're gonna do is the other method, is where we're gonna tie both the legs together. So we're gonna make sure we don't move this leg as much as possible, but we want to start securing the legs together. So what we would do is, of course, um, have some uh, gauze, or uh, if we have some string or something, we would just take and just wrap it, make sure they um, together. Try to not lifting the leg as much as you can. Um, <coughs> so you would tie, make sure they together. Of course, you wanna make sure that it's not tied tightly. You're gonna be checking for the pulse again um, at the lower part of the extremities, making sure that there's some sort of circulation there's some sort of movement and sensation. But again, because there's several ways to do a fibula, but in this case, because we do not have two SAMs to put on both sides of the fibula, what we did, we went for the improvised version and we tied two, both legs together. So that keeps them stable and to keep the pressure down. And again, we all we're gonna continue to check for uh, the pulse. And that's what, how you would treat a, a fibula, a tibia. Thank you. Next video will be managing 
a hand. Um, when you banish a hand, you want to apply the figure eight method. And to apply the figure eight method, you will have uh, some galls such as this, or um, you can use um, elastic bandage. <laughs> so first thing you want to do is have the hand up like this. You want to start right here. You're going to wrap it around like that once, like that. And then you want to go around the finger, the thumb, like that. Make sure it's secure. You want to continue on. Just keep wrapping like that. And then you want to go back around and wrap until you have secured the hand in place until medical attention should get here. Of course, you do not want to make sure, you want to make sure that you have not wrapped the hand too tight. After doing the figure eight method, you want to check for circulation. You want to check for um, whether it's, um, that it's not, that you have the blood circulating. Um, of course, you know, you want to have not to move their fingers as much as possible. Um, again, in order to, you want to check for circulation. You want to check for sensation. Um, um, checking to see, um, have the person close their eyes and ask them, you know, what part of the finger or which finger you're touching. Um, and then again, you want to continue to do that. So you ask the person when you, with the eyes closed, which finger you're touching. That way they know the sensation. And of course, the circulation is you will press down and see if there's any blood that comes to the um, tip of the toes. Tip of the finger. Thank you. Now, our next video will be the buddy splint method. And this is to make sure that two fingers are together to help support one another. What you would do is take some a couple galls, or if you don't have any galls, or um, you can use a sock or anything that's heavy or secure and soft, and you will place it between the two fingers like this, securing them together. Then, of course, you would take your galls and wrap and wrap it around the finger to secure them together. This gives support for the injured finger so it doesn't um, be so it doesn't get out of more danger. So again, this is how you would do a buddy wrap. You again make sure that it's not tight. Um, you would make sure the circulation is done. But just put a cloth between the two fingers and secure it with the um, with a gauze. Thank you. In summary, in cases of injuries to the body, there are certain steps that a person should follow when they're addressing injuries of the, bo of the body. They are to make sure that any open wounds, you are to make sure that they're covered up with a sterile bandage before applying any splint on the person. You always want to check for circulation, sensation, and movement in the extremities. You do that by checking the pulses. If it's upper extremity, you check at the lower part of the hand right here. And if it's the lower part of the extremity, you would check down here at the ankle. Again, um, if a person injured, you do not want like certain parts like the knee or the hip, you do not want to move them um, or force any part of the body back into position. If it's a shoulder injury, you do not want to put it, position it back into position. Um, in a case of splinting guidelines, one of the major things is um, you do not want, you should use the rule of thumb method, um, I'm sorry, the rule of third method. Divide the part, the body into third, three parts, and that way you would tell what part you would be working on and where you check for injuries. Um, for a fractured middle bone, you would stabilize, of course, the, um, the bone on the top part, and that's why you use the rule of uh, the rule of third because that way you know which part of the body will be affected okay if there's more than one provider present um you should provide as much support as possible by minimizing their movement you do not want to you want to keep the person as stable as possible and particularly keep them calm um if possible if possible you can um Make sure that make sure you secure both sides of the injury if you can. If it's a hip injury, you want to make sure um, both sides of the hip is secure 
outside of the hand and inside of the leg. So please, if, um, um, another thing you want to make sure when you have an injury, um, to keep, again, to keep it straight. Um, if you want to keep the two parts of the body together when you have the um, tibia, you know, tie them together for support. Um, again, after you apply, you do not want to, uh, again, apply, apply the splints too tight because you want to continue to go back and check for the circulation. Um, periodically, you want to make sure that the pulse is still there and the pulse disappears on a person. You want to loosen up the strings. Um, and again, that's part of the circulation, sensation, and movement. And one of the things also, one of the top, out of the top 10 things to do for splints is to apply the rice method, which is the rest, make sure that the body, the person is resting as much as they can because that helps to um, help to heal up, heal the body. You want to apply ice to the part of the body um, at least for 20 minutes for every three hours for 48 hours. Um, you want to make sure they have compression um, that they um, that is not pressure but it's stabilized and of course you want to elevate the fractured part of the body if you can if you cannot move the body don't move the body again thank you um, for um, listening and I hope that you enjoy this video thank you